Is AI creative? Can it make real art? Is AI conscious? Does it have interiority and sentience? Is it alive? We think that these are the wrong questions when it comes to AI. If we ask the questions we currently ask, it's a little bit as if we address the new in terms of the old. Asking better questions would mean to address AI in terms of its newness, to learn to think the new in terms of the new. And what I observe is that many people, when they're confronted with that question or with that possibility, have a, a slight hesitation, almost a resistance. And what I find fascinating is, like I often say that we humans live by conceptual assumptions, by little conceptual presuppositions that, that we're mostly not aware of. Well, here, here AI has the power to bring out one of these conceptual assumptions. Most humans take it for granted that we can have something, that we humans can have something that machines cannot have, creativity. We can be creative and machines cannot. Once one sees such a conceptual assumption, one can turn to the history of thought and basically ask, when did this assumption first surface? Why did it surface? What were the ideas that led to it? And then we can ask calmly, what does AI do to, this, to the ideas that led to this, to this conceptual configuration? The first time that uh, it was articulated that only humans are creative, that creativity is a human unique property, was in the late 18th century in, in, Kant, uh, in Kant's third critique. And it's really interesting to reconstruct how he gets to the idea that humans are creative. So Kant considers the whether there is a difference between organisms as living things and mechanical systems or machines. He basically uh, concluded that there is an irreducible and almost ontological difference between organisms and mechanical things or machines. And that is that organisms have this thing, this uh, sort of um, what he called growth or epigenesis or an individuation process that begins before birth and continues all of life. Various machines, once they're built, are kind of finished, they're done, they're sort of closed holes. Because organisms are living things, there is an irreducible openness that continues to unfold in a sort of playful variation uh, throughout life versus machines are closed systems. And in the third critique, the critique of judgment, he returns to that distinction. And he says, well, it appears as though there is one kind of organism, humans, in which this openness and playfulness of nature is combined with the sort of inner openness um, that reason provides humans with. And, and in that inner openness, the playfulness of nature, the openness of living nature, and the, the openness of reason combine and gives rise to the possibility of inventing forms that do not yet exist in the world. A sort of playful invention of forms that do not yet exist in nature. And he called that creativity, which was uh, historically, the first the first uh, time that somebody, at least in the West, suggested that humans are creative, um, before it was uh, always assumed that only the gods are creative. The power of AI, or the power of the possibility that AI could be creative, is that it that it makes this conceptual configuration, the history of this conceptual configuration, visible for us. And the beauty of AI is that it empowers us with the possibility of reconsidering this Kantian anthropology of creativity. We now can ask, can creativity exist beyond the human? Yes or no? Each time I'm trying to ask this question, I come up with the following. Creativity is a process. In the course of this process, forms and possibilities emerge that we experience as cognitively new as cognitively surprising. We haven't seen something like that before. And that can be pleasing and, and elevating, but it can also be shocking. And the question that really intrigues me and captures me and is, is can AI participate in this creative process? Can AI supply something to this creative process that we humans did not put into it? So this is not asking can AI be creative on its own, and yet it yet it asks and thereby gives AI a legitimacy, can AI 
expand the creative process beyond the human. And if it can do that, if it can supply things, aspects to the creative process that we didn't put into it, then we can have creative experiences and see creative possibilities that are not reducible to us humans, that did not solely emerge from us. And then we did expand creativity beyond the Kantian sort of framework, the Kantian conceptual configurations. And that's a powerful philosophical event. The most fascinating part for me about this possibility of, of uh, reconsidering creativity and the creative process outside of the framework of the Kantian anthropology that we have m more or less and in so many difficult and broken ways lived by since the 18th century is that it's simultaneously a philosophical question emerging from AI and an empirical technical question like philosophy and technology are indeed literally coincide. We can build AI systems to explore if AI can supply things to the creative process we didn't put into it.